Hello and welcome to the Critic Curious. Today we are back inside Empire of Sin. Thank you very much for joining us again, guys. Today's video is a little bit different. It's 2022 and a viewer commented and let me know that they had a brilliant video idea and I happen to agree. So I'm gonna to put together an ultimate beginner's guide for Empire of Sin after of course the precinct update compiling all the tips and tricks for everything i think a beginner could use and um, when starting out the game now there is an awful lot of stuff to go through i will try and be as detailed as possible while going as quickly as possible just to get all the information out because this is going to be a long video even me going quite quickly Ordinarily, I would put together this in short bite-sized videos. I will also put links in this video for certain things I've done before, like my latest playthrough with Maxim Zalnik. You might learn something there. A detailed money guide video, combat guide video, um, and gangster guide video too. So I'll put them all here and I will briefly go over them in this video on top of that. And before we get into the video, guys, if you enjoy what you're watching, find entertaining, or just want to watch more Empire Sin content, please do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. Amongst the 200 videos of Empire Sin I have recorded and released on the channel, only 20% of you are actually subscribed to the channel. I cannot tell you how much it will mean to me to see this channel grow, especially with more Empire Sin content. It means I know you guys want it, you want some more, and it will help reach bigger audiences if you guys do me that favor and hit that subscribe button. Anyway, let's talk about bosses. This is the first choice you're gonna have in the game and not all bosses were built equally. With the current meta of the game, melee is extremely powerful, therefore melee bosses are probably ranked higher than a few of the other bosses. However, in the top three has to be Daniel B. E. Jackson, Frankie Donovan, and of course, Maxim Zelnick. For the sake of this playthrough, I'm gonna pick Daniel McGee Jackson, and we're gonna get on with it. However, I am also gonna kickstart the boss spotlight videos that I used to do. I'm gonna redo all of the bosses because a lot has changed since the last time I'd done them. I'd recently done one for Maxim Zelnick. Uh, so if you're looking for your boss, comment down below. If you get in first and fast, I will do your boss first. And, uh, and yeah, let's get into it anyway. Now, all these tips apply no matter what difficulty you are playing in. For the sake of the video, I am playing in the easiest difficulty. I normally play on boss difficulty. I always do my playthroughs on all boss difficulty. So anything you see on my channel is recorded in boss difficulty when it comes to the walkthroughs. So after picking your boss, your difficulty, and how many neighborhoods you are going to be running in, the first thing you're going to be wanting to do is running around and finding all of the AI bosses. Now, there could be an awful lot of them in your game. There could only be a handful in your game, but you're going to want to find every single one of them and start mapping out not only your neighborhood, but the city as well. And if you wanna go into a different neighborhood, all you have to do is click on the taxi icon in the neighborhood you actually want to be in, and you'll quickly teleport there. Now, once you have found a boss, you will be given a couple of options. You can begin combat straight away, you can just greet them, or of course, you can request sit down. Now, I'm gonna tell you why, if you've never played this game, request sit down is the better option number one it opens up another fast travel point fast travel points can be very helpful it helps you you know maneuver around a city very quickly you don't have to use it i think sit downs have something like 70 day cooldown on them so you've got a while you can kind of sit them there if you want to but also once you actually request a sit down attend the sit down at the beginning of the game you are guaranteed a business deal guys now that's very important for a number of different reasons um, but you only get that right at the beginning of the game you only get that guarantee with as many bosses in a game as possible at your very first chance if you've requested a sit down now at the sit down you can have a couple of different options you can even negotiate your terms for the business arrangement However, I wouldn't do that here because you're probably going to get 
refused and then wreck your chances at a business arrangement. Once you get later into the game, you're going to have a little bit more power and therefore you can negotiate yourself some better deals. But the absolute beautiful thing about having a business arrangement with people is that you now have access to favors. These favors can range in good things or bad things. You can borrow money, you can borrow alcohol, but more importantly, you can hire the boss to hit another boss. Take out any boss in a game, take out any gangster in the game. Um, now, it's not always going to work. In fact, it's probably going to fail. But you might have fun trying again and again and again until it actually works. Now you have a business arrangement with the AI as well. They automatically like you a little bit more. However, you can change that faction rating with any boss in the game simply by trading with them. You basically give them old gear that you don't really like, that you don't really want anymore, sell it on to them for a quid, and they see it as a favorable deal and look at you a little bit more kindly. You can rinse and repeat this until you have uh, the ideal relationship you want with them. If you're looking to have possibly the best relationship, you're going to want to put that up to plus 300-ish. And then, of course, you can get some really good deals later in the game. And I'll explain why that's good a little bit later. After that, of course, you are going to be wanting to run around and pick up Big Jim Stash. If you're running around already finding all the bosses, you might as well pick these up as well. Now, a lot of people would tell you that they're absolutely useless. And to a certain degree, they are correct. But every now and again, you get some awesome stuff in there, especially body armor. I seem to get very lucky with body armor in these in these stash boxes. Um, and they could be really beneficial to your playthrough. Now, if you zoom out the map or run along, you will find um, these stashes by looking out for the red marks on the map. They will be guarding a box. In that box is your goodies. Um, it's as simple as that, guys. You do get some bad stuff. You do get some good stuff. But, of course, you can always save scum it until you get exactly what you want, if you really want to. And once you've explored everywhere, you've got some goodies, you've probably got a little bit of money, what you're going to be wanting to do then is looking at hiring somebody. Now, there's an awful lot to go over when we're talking about gangsters. Not all gangsters were born the same. There are definitely some better than others. And there's a few different things that you want to look out for. When it comes to a gangster's stats, for me, I find movement is a big thing that I want. I want a gangster with high movement. That way they have good mobility on the field. So look out for that as a stat. Also, you have got tiers. As we can see, one to five, one being the lowest, five being the best. It's going to take you a while to build up to the rank fives because you're not going to have the notoriety to even unlock them. They're not going to look at you. They don't want to work for you. So you're going to be stuck hiring the lower tier gangsters. And that's fine. There are some gems there too. Something you're going to want to try and get yourself is probably a doctor, a medic. Now, Daniel McGee Jackson happens to be a medic himself once you kind of level him up a little minute. But hiring yourself a medic is a very good call for a couple of different reasons. On top of that, there are a couple of abilities, traits that you kind of want to look out for. The first one is shoot first. Now, right at the bottom, we actually have a, a gangster with shoot first ability. And of course, Tommy Biscuits also has hair trigger. Now, hair trigger is one of my favorite uh, traits in the entire game. Basically, whenever one of your gangsters or your boss gets down to a certain level of health, they kind of go a little bit ballistics, unloading their weapon and causing a bit of devastation around. The doctor can also have a mission where she triggers and she ends up getting hair trigger, which is quite nice. And shoot first is another very good trait to look out for. Uh, and it kind of, when you load into a battle, it kind of goes into an overwatch. Your character have a small red ring around them and anyone inside that red circle uh, will be shot at. Shoot first is definitely a good one to look out for. And remember when I said all gangsters weren't born the same? Well, some of these gangsters have one good trait 
And other gangsters happen to have two good traits. There are a few of them out there, but Cristiano happens to be my favorite gangster in the game and is possibly the best gangster in the entire game. He has shoot first and, of course, hair trigger. So now onto the neighborhoods themselves. So with the precinct update that came last year, what they've introduced is pipelines. Now, if you have a little look-see, you can see uh, this is my precinct represented by the solid line. Around that precinct, there are some other precincts with dotted lines. Any dotted line precinct I can take over right now, um, which is pretty cool. And if we have a little look-see... Down at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see that there is a solid lined precinct. That precinct belongs to someone else. Their precinct isn't actually touching any border that we own. Therefore, we can't attack them and take it off them. Now, all the neighborhoods are actually linked by a supply line as well. These supply lines are what get us in and out of the city, or at least get our goods in and out of the city. Think of it as like an underground network. So we would need to attack the precinct that the supply line touches. Uh, and then, of course, grow our empire as such. Now, if you want to take on a precinct, you have to take on the depots. Uh, depots are hard battles, and they are basically the, the boss of the precinct. In the different precincts, you have got the rackets. Every racket supports the depot. So if you attack the depot without attacking the rackets, you can expect those other rackets to be supporting the depot and they will come in with reinforcements. Now, it's not always the case if you attack thug precincts, for instance. Um, but if you attack an ally, uh, sorry, an AI's precinct, you can bet your bottom dollar he has got reinforcements to help him out. As we can see, as we load in, this thug uh, precinct, thug owned precinct, has eight reinforcements. That's because he will have four rackets supporting this depot. So, if we want to weaken it, what we're first going to have to do is attack those rackets, ransack them, and then that will reduce the amount of reinforcements that they get. Honestly, these battles are a lot of fun, and the beginning part of the game is probably the best part of the game because it is so tough. You really do have to work to having the good, you know, the good weapons, the good body armor, the good gangsters to be able to make those fights um, easier and easier as you go on. So we've established you have scouted out. You've got good relationships with the other bosses now. You've got all your all your stash boxes. You've also been running into minor factions. Now there's a few good things about the minor factions. You can set up standing orders. So that is looking at all of the extra booze that you're making and selling it on. Bear in mind they don't have unlimited cash. They can't can't they, they can't handle everything you can send them anymore. But they can handle a little bit here and there. So keep them alive. You've obviously got a lot of them. Every single one of them can be set up with a standing order. And of course, if you are on good relations with them, you can also request protection. Protection money is a great way of making money, especially early game. If you've gone for 10 neighborhoods, for instance, and minimal bosses, well, the game's going to be filling all that space out with extra minor factions. Therefore, you can have a lot of of protection money coming in. Protection money is probably the easiest way to make money in the game. All you have to do is find one of them, meet and greet them and say, would you like my protection? Nine times out of 10, no one else has picked them up and therefore it's all yours. Next up, why do we want to build good relationships? Well, I'll tell you why. Take Goldie, for instance. We have a faction rating with her. It could be better, of course. It could be a lot worse. And depending on her faction rating, depends on how favorable she looks uh, when it comes to trading. Now, if we was to trade her, for example, a load of our swill, which by now, if you've been following this kind of step-by-step -step guide, you're probably collecting an awful lot of swill. As you'll notice, we can actually disguise this swill as something else. For instance, 
we can disguise it as whiskey, probably the most expensive commodity in the game. And of course, Goldie is going to be wanting an awful lot of it. Everyone wants whiskey. That's the whole point of kind of Empire of Sin and the Prohibition era. You know, you want that good alcohol. Now, cautionary tale, they will discover that you are doing them over. They're not going to be happy that you're doing them over. And you can only do it once to each and every boss. However, I find if you do it before you actually declare war on the boss, then no harm, no foul. Doesn't really matter. And as you can see, Goldie happened to get very lucky with all the loot boxes. She got all the weapons. We got a little bit of armor. So it evens out. We get ourselves some decent weapons for our gangsters. We kit them out and then, of course, go to war. As you can see, you can get money, you can get guns, you could get body armor. Have a little look-see around at your other bosses in your game. See what they actually have available to them in their inventory before you decide to do the trades. Just remember what I said, choose wisely because this can kick you. But as you can see, it is extremely worthwhile doing so. It's one of the small exploits still in a game where you can manipulate the, the AI bosses into giving you almost anything that you want. Okay, so now we've robbed Goldie absolutely blind. Nice one, right? Now we're going to go to war with her. Now before we actually go to war with her, it's a good idea to have a look to see how close you are for discovering the safe house the way the game works is the more information you have about the boss the more likelihood you are of gaining that intel into where their safe house is every single boss's safe house is uh, hidden every boss has a safe house your job is to find out where it is and you do that by basically interacting with them you can do it through trades as you can see i've already had some interaction with her. I'm a quarter of the way of already discovering the safe house. Um, and I'm going to go to war and we're going to start attacking the rackets, maybe even attack a death squad or two. But because she only currently has one precinct, um, this is going to be very, very quick. It's only going to take us maybe two or three of her rackets. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we will reveal her safe house. Now, if you actually zoom out, you'll see that she's got troops on the field. It is a good idea to attack them. It is a good idea to take them out. These aren't death troops when you go to war. They can literally send out squads of troops to attack you. These aren't these. These are just scouts. But if you do destroy them, if you do kill them, Goldie then has to fork out of her own pocket replacements. And as you remember, we just dropped her blind, so she can't actually do that. And as we're now talking about war, it's probably a very good idea to go over weapons within the game. There are really two types of weapons in the game currently. You have two AP to spend when you get your go in combat. And you have single AP use weapons and you have double use AP weapons. The sniper rifle and the machine gun are double AP weapons. As you level them up, they will become very, very powerful. And in fact, the, the machine gun can actually drop down to a 1 AP weapon if you invest that time to actually use it or to unlock that. The other weapons, the rifle, the submachine gun, the shotgun, the melee and the handgun are all single AP weapons, meaning you can move and fire which is absolutely great. The rifle's kind of your long range. The shotgun's kind of your in-your-face blast them with a lot of damage. And then you've got the submachine gun, which is a little bit in between. However, with the submachine gun, you actually get a few extra things that can pop into it. Like, for instance, if you, we was to get Daniel McGee Jackson's unique weapon, which is the Gravedigger, that inflicts bleed 100% of the chance. Um... A few of the different weapons do do that. To have a look around, there are some very good weapons out there and getting these effect weapons are very beneficial. Now, when it comes to the pistol and the melee weapons, there's currently a combo in the game where you can actually fire off 
a pistol round and then swap to melee. And because melee is a 100% hit chance right now, it's extremely overpowered. Uh, and of course, then you can do that. So you can have two hits in one turn. It's very good combo. And as you level up melee, um, it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Just check out some of those extra traits that you get for, for leveling it up. It's crazy. Now, interrupting my weapon talk real quickly, uh, there are two different ways to actually heal outside of combat as well. I figured this would be useful to actually let you know. You can do an ambush mode, and then with the ambush, select who you want to heal. Or, of course, you could just simply select your doctor. If you select your doctor, um, then you can pick heal and then pick who you want to heal outside of uh, combat completely however i like to actually pause the game when you when you ambush mode heal you do pause the game and quickly getting back to the weapons and the proficiencies um, before i forget the different leveled gangsters you hire will have different level proficiencies so if you hire a level one gangster they're going to have very low proficiencies on all weapons as to if you hire level five gangsters most of them actually have those level five proficiencies already learned guys which means you can get that machine gun and you can knock that down to one ap which becomes an extremely powerful build and once you've been at war for a while, hitting those those different rackets, you will, of course, discover the safe house. And at the end of the video, I'm actually going to show you a complete playthrough of me hitting a safe house, guys, so that way you can see me actually in combat mode as well. But before we jump to that, we haven't actually touched on the business mechanics of the game at all just yet. So when you have a precinct, you will have different slots where you can make your, your rackets, whatever you want to make. Now, the money makers in the game currently and for the foreseeable future are loan sharks. You need a fixer in order to get a loan shark, however. Typically, they give you around 10% back on whatever money you put in. So if you get a small, it's that will cost you five grand, medium will be 20 grand, or a large will be $100,000. Now, it's a good idea to invest early game, that way you get your most amount of money back possible, um, but that's just that's just my tip on the, on the loan sharks. If you don't have make it count, the best way to make money is whiskey we have touched on that earlier it's always been the best way to make money and it still is now so focus on getting breweries as many breweries as you can i like to have my very first um neighborhood kind of producing the entirety of my whiskey um empire for every other neighborhood i end up taking over so i will put a lot of breweries in the first few precincts i have and then of course you want to start getting out with um the pro producing more alcohol and getting more or better alcohol quality because eventually you do want that whiskey so start upgrading as early as you can because it is a snowball effect the earlier you get that whiskey the more powerful you are late game but of course, in order to sell it, you're going to need speakeasies. And speakeasies are where the real money comes in if you don't have loan sharks. And you'll notice that as well. If you have a precinct with a speakeasy, a casino, and uh, a brothel, your speakeasy is going to be making you the most money because they are selling on all that whiskey. Of course, the better quality alcohol you're selling, the more money you're going to have coming in. To be honest with you, a casino is also a good shout. However, you have to remember if you are having a lot of casinos that you can both win and lose money off them. Every now and again, you're going to have someone win big. And that's going to be a big deficit in your money. You ever have one of those games where all of a sudden you're minus 3,000 and you're trying to figure out why that is? You know, nothing's really changed, but yet your money keeps fluctuating. It's fluctuating because of the casinos. You don't really see it. There's no in-game notifications, but it's happening. It's a live game. So that's kind of what's happening. It's also really worth paying attention to your synergies as well. As you see, we've got five different synergies that we can get, you know, like three of a kind. You've got two of a pair. You've got a straight flush. 
um, you have a full house. And these synergies really boost up your money. For anyone familiar with poker, they immediately understand what you've got to do. But for instance, for three of a kind, you simply need three breweries. For a full house, you need a pair, so a pair of speakeasies, or three breweries. And for a straight, you need one of each. Now, it's important to note that if you have three breweries and two speakeasies, and that's making up your full house, those same three breweries will not be able to make up your three of a kind. That's going to have to be three brand new rackets, so three more extra breweries or whatever racket it is that you want to make. Um, but no racket can count towards a different or another synergy. But as you can see, I mean, 7.5% plus on income just for having full house is absolutely worth it. Um, it's definitely worth filling out these synergies. Um, they've been in the game since the beginning, really. Um, it's just now you can actually see them a lot better than you used to be able to. So keep that in mind. The synergies are seriously a very good way of boosting your income in the game. Another fantastic way to boost the income in your game is by completing missions. There's a lot of different missions. You've got empire missions. So basically, as you grow your empire, you will complete these missions. Anyway, you can get some cash and you can get some goodies. You can also get some trinkets and trinkets are exceptionally powerful in this game. So keep an eye out for any mission that's offering a trinket. On top of trinkets, you have got uh, side missions. These side missions on top of trinkets. On top of the, the empire missions, you've also got the side missions. Side missions, uh, there's quite a lot of them in a game and you p end up picking up more with the different uh, gangsters that you hire as well. Some of those gangsters have some very, very good uh, little missions. They can be a lot of fun. Um, so check them out. Again, they come with good money or okay money and uh, some good trinkets alongside them. Plus, like I said, the stories are actually pretty funny. And then you have the main mission and the main missions are where you're going to find the big bucks. That's where you get the most amount of money and they're all worth completing because when you complete them, you get a new, new ugh, can't even get it out. You get a unique weapon and the unique weapons in the game are very, very powerful weapons. You also get a weapon from every boss that you kill as well. So keep that in mind. Um, I have got a video on every single boss's weapon in a game too, and there are some absolutely amazing weapons to get. And if you have finally taken over your first neighborhood, you're going to be wanting to expand past that into a brand new neighborhood using that supply line. And the very first precinct that you take over happens to become a brand new safe house, guys. And it's here where you can assign your first lieutenant. Now, I've had quite a few people comment on videos beforehand when I've put up about how to make a lieutenant. However, you can't make a lieutenant in your starting neighborhood. It has to be the first or the extra neighborhoods that you actually expand into. But as you can see, you do get a few extra bonuses for actually assigning a lieutenant. So it could be a good idea to do so. Personally, I don't really like them. And the very last combat tip I guess I have for you guys is the, the combat revel resolutions. Um, now, they got added a little while ago. It's a very welcome add as well. However, I would give you a bit of caution here. I wouldn't resolve a battle under... Personally, I don't resolve a battle under 80%. If it's above 80%, you're almost guaranteed, literally almost guaranteed, to win the battle. You'll find that quite a few of you people are injured. It'd be negligible injuries, but they will be injured. Um... If it's under 80%, you are really rolling the dice here, guys, into territory where your boss could die, your gangster could die. And if you're not going to reload the game, I mean, the auto resolution is absolutely great for defending yourself when you're constantly being attacked by the enemy. But when you're doing the attacking, just watch and be careful when you actually use it.
And that is it, guys. That is all of the tips I have for you. And as promised, this is... We are at war with Goldie. I showed you we're at war with Goldie. And I'm going to show you me taking out her safe house as well, just so that we get some kind of idea of how I use my troops um, and the weapons that I use as well. Um, I really hope that you've actually learned something from this entire guide here, guys. I really did try and put as many tips and tricks in as possible. I'm sure you can appreciate that there's a long, long list. It's not an easy video to make. And if I did miss anything at all, and I'm sure there are definitely things that I missed or didn't go into enough detail about, just comment down below and I'll do my very best to either explain it in a comment or maybe even link a video. I do actually have an active and growing Discord as well, guys. So the link will be in the description. Feel free to jump in. I've got a lot of Empire Sim players in there, a lot of family members as well. Um, the family is a group of uh, people that gave like the devs a little bit of advice of what the community wanted to see in the game. So we've got a lot of family members in there and everybody is welcome and of course don't forget to like and subscribe to the video uh, if you've enjoyed what you wanted to or what you've watched and want to see more of it whatever you need oh, finally there's nothing nothing as relaxing as a nice little bit of combat that's what i feel anyway a lot of people also comment asking me why i run such a small crew i'm actually running a team of six here, so I've hired five gangsters. I seem to find running with between three to five gangsters as well as the boss is where you're going to find your most enjoyment in your game. It's when it's not super, super easy and it's not super, super hard. Um, it kind of finds a nice balance. At the moment, the game in general, even on boss difficulty, is probably a little bit too easy. Um, so as players, we tend to want that challenge so if you have a crew between three and five people you will find um probably the most enjoyment in a game if i'm wrong let me know down in the comments and tell me how many people you like to run with i do know that a few people run with 10 gangsters but i don't know how they deal with that combat it's got to be so easy There's so many like rifles or submachine guns everywhere it can be crazy but thanks for joining me in the rest of this video, guys. And until next time, I've been a monk who's been critically clueless, and I will see you in the next video. And until then, enjoy the gameplay. I'm on it.
Understood. Beautiful. Entendido. Done and dusted. Chicago told a cautionary tale. This is 